mathematics is perhaps not the first subject that springs to mind when thinking of nature, but many modern researchers have endeavoured to explain nature in mathematical terms, and some inroads have been made. There are certain areas of mathematics that impact upon various aspects of nature. In particular, the following areas are worthy of note. Fractals, a term contracted from the words fraction and dimensional. Fractals explain why some systems in nature are self-similar, such as ferns. The butterfly effect and strange attractors. This type of mathematics gives us clues about the flow of water and the nature of weather systems. Affine transformations. The processes of reflection, rotation and scaling are seen to be operating in nature to generate biological forms. Geometry and symmetry. Basic geometrical figures can be found in nature such as the hexagonal arrangement of a snowflake. Spirals. Mathematical spirals are seen to occur in nature in snail shells, nautilus, galaxies and in DNA. Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. Number series can indicate the pattern of growth in rabbit populations and terms may be found in the number of petals of a flower. Population dynamics. Certain areas of math such as differential calculus can be shown to govern how populations grow and collapse. Animal skin markings. The mathematics of reaction diffusion can explain the patterns on animal skins. In our world, we are used to measuring things in three dimensions of length, width and depth. Some of the things we find in nature do not succumb easily to such measurements, and we are forced to explain their shape using fractional dimensions. Mountain landscapes are a good example of a fractal. As if we use a one metre rule to measure around a mountain surface, we would miss out all the gaps less than a metre in length. If we then use a shorter rule to measure the surface, we would find it would fit all the gaps and we would end up measuring a longer distance. Fractals are also representative of those types of structure which exhibit self-similarity. In the case of a mountain face, it is made up of smaller and smaller rocks which are vaguely similar. A better example of such self-similarity in nature is a fern, which can readily be seen to be made up of what appear to be copies of itself at smaller and smaller scales. Cauliflower heads and broccoli also exhibit patterns where copies of the main pattern appear at smaller and smaller scales. Benoit Mandelbrot discovered fractals whilst working for IBM, and now has a set of numbers named after him. The butterfly effect is the propensity of any dynamic system to be sensitive to initial conditions. This type of mathematics pertains to such things as water flow and weather systems, where any slight change in one circumstance can radically alter the outcome. 
It may also be that our current interaction with the Earth's environment is having a more and more pronounced effect upon the weather system and habitats, as we find that more and more creatures struggle to find a niche in which they can continue to survive. The symbolic representation of this effect is engendered by the Lorentz attractor, a diagram which is the result of modelling weather equations. Such equations exist for many natural processes including fluid flow. The diagrams which represent the equations are called strange attractors after their propensity to try and keep the variables in the equations within certain extremes. In the case of the Lorentz attractor, the red lines indicate normal weather patterns and the other areas may be points that we don't normally see, such as snow in the desert. Such attractors are behind modern computing methods used to give us weather predictions and can also be used to predict catastrophes such as volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Affine transformations are the processes of rotation, reflection and scaling. Many plant forms utilise these processes to generate their structure. In the case of broccoli and cauliflower heads, it can readily be seen that there is a type of pattern which also shows some spiralling in the case of broccoli. It's perhaps not so obvious what is happening in a cauliflower head, but perhaps the process of taking a smaller copy and rotating it is very evident in the case of a fern, where each branch appears to be a smaller version of the main plant and so on, at smaller scales. The branching processes of trees which do not appear to the naked eye as self-similar can also be modelled with branching computer programs called L-Systems, which attempt to understand the structure of trees in terms of branching rules. It is obvious to us as human beings when we look in the mirror that to a large degree our own bodies have an axis of symmetry and that the left and right hand side of us are to within a degree of error mirror images of each other. Elsewhere in nature we can see other such symmetries. The most obvious is the six-fold symmetry of a snowflake crystal. The same symmetry can be found in the combs of the social insects such as bees. Many fruiting bodies such as tomatoes or apples have rotational symmetries or carry segments such as those of an orange which break up the circle into fractional parts. The propensity of symmetries and geometries to show up in natural objects can sometimes be traced to the molecules that make up the object or possibly because the arrangement of matter takes up the least space or minimizes the use of energy or maximizes the use of space while creating structural strength. The arrangement of atoms in a molecule is not visible to us under ordinary everyday circumstances, but often the properties of any compound can be due to the geometrical arrangement of the atoms in the substance. Water molecules are composed of hydrogen and oxygen atoms in the molecule H2O, 
which has configurations of the atoms that may give rise to the hexagonal structure of the snowflake. It is worth noting that some molecules come in left and right handed versions which are called chiral molecules and before the human race knew of the consequences of this simple reflection it was assumed that the variation in the molecule symmetry made no difference to the chemical properties of the actual molecule. In fact we now know that it very much does affect the properties and in at least one case lack of knowledge of chiral molecules led to a medical travesty that of thalidomide. Chiral molecules are also at large where there is a variation in taste such as lemon and orange fruit. The most well known if little actually witnessed spiral in nature is our own DNA inside our cells. This of course is known as the double helix and a helix is slightly different than a spiral. But as with other geometries it is interesting that there are subtle mathematical relationships between the atomic arrangement of molecules and the symmetries of the forms that those molecules are involved in creating. Another more readily observed spiral in nature is the arrangement of the outer skin of a pineapple. On this fruiting body we can see two interlacing spirals wrapped around the surface of the fruit. We can see a similar arrangement in the seeds of the seed head of a sunflower. And we can also find that such spirals are sometimes a consequence of Fibonacci number sequences and an attempt by the flower or fruit to maximise the number of seeds into the space that it has for them. More common spirals in nature appear in snail shells and a particularly beautiful example is the shell of the nautilus whose flotation chambers are arranged in a mathematical sequence of increasing size as the animal grows within its shell. We might see from this that the shell shape is a consequence of the process of increasing size of the contained animal and the shape is not designed. Further out into the cosmos we still find spirals and so we can see that mathematics is at large in our universe from the very smallest scales of the atom right up to the largest scales that the universe can provide. Fibonacci numbers are those that create a sequence by adding up successive numbers starting with 1, which is added to itself to get 2, then 2 is added to 1 to get 3, and then 3 is added to 2 to get 5, and so on. This sequence, which continues 8, 13, 21, very often is behind the arrangement or number of petals in the flower head or the number of seeds or spirals in a fruiting body. Because it is a relatively simple sequence where the next term is generated from the previous one, it is something plants can do easily and also easy for computers to copy. Such sequences can also be behind the spiralling arrangements often seen in biological forms. If we lay the terms out on a two-dimensional diagram, we can generate spirals. Pine cones are another good example of where we see spirals and Fibonacci numbers. As with the pineapple, the pattern is obvious to the eye, but without a mathematical understanding we take these aspects of nature for granted, or attribute them to a designer. The terms of the Fibonacci sequence are also present in the reproduction rates of rabbits, which may account for the surprising increase in the populations of them. So much so that they are often used as a symbol of fertility, as when Easter cards carry images of them. Population growth and dynamics is another area of nature that mathematics has a rather lot of impact upon. Population dynamics is sometimes controversial because it starts to make statements about policies such as culling and vaccination which people often create emotional arguments about without understanding all the facts or possibly go looking for causes which don't actually exist. Currently, for instance, the human race is witnessing a collapse in the population of bees, and is also concerned about overfishing. There have also been arguments about seal culling, whaling, and also the hunting of foxes and culling of badgers. In the public domain, very few people are aware of the work that has been done analysing how populations of creatures grow and develop and sometimes collapse. In particular, the work of Robert May on chaos theory, as it applies to populations, has shed some sometimes counterintuitive light on population dynamics. There are some computer models which capture some of the essences of either populations of creatures or cellular systems. John Conway's LIFE program attempts to mimic the way a cell culture might grow or display characteristics or even die off altogether. Most interestingly, the program only has three rules and yet exhibits complex behaviour including reproduction and evolution and mutation. 
Cells in his program can proliferate or die depending in what environment they start off. And it may be we have lessons to learn about cause and effect in the environment. If we see that dinosaur population crashed, we go looking for a meteor crash site or a virus or an environmental change. Mathematical models tell us that this need not be the case and also instruct us that we might think we can keep fishing and fishing, we've given quotas and feel safe in doing so, but it may not in fact be the case. Those of the country set seem to think they understand how to control pests, such as foxes or maybe even squirrels. But the populations are subject to factors such as availability of food and the propensity of predators to kill them. All of this must be taken into account before a crass cull is taken up, for we may actually be shooting ourselves in the foot when we discover a knock-on effect, or indeed butterfly effect, because of the unseen consequences of our actions. Simple predator-prey modelling is done using differential calculus, and can easily be watched on a home computer. It becomes apparent when doing so that simple meddling with a population with a cull is ill-advised, and it behoves us as humans to understand the complexity of population dynamics before trying to exhibit control over it. When we look at a leopard spots, or the markings of a dalmatian, or maybe even the wings of a butterfly, we may be apt to think that these patterns are intrinsically random, or perhaps entirely a property created genetically via evolution, perhaps to enable a species to survive by creating a warning sign, or by echoing some aspect of the environment for camouflage purposes. What may not be apparent is that work done by Alan Turing suggested ways in which mass might explain such markings, but latterly we have begun to understand the patterning on animals in terms of reaction diffusion equations. These can produce stable states which may offer a glimpse as to how chemical systems in a biological system work to create a pattern. Such systems are equally capable of producing rings such as those seen on certain species of butterfly, so when we look at the nature around us it might be worthwhile considering the phrase, I never did maths at school, I didn't know what I would use it for. Mm -hmm.